as Kamal says, we sit here and talk and hope that the right to life will be safeguarded. Of course, human right is for all and must be for all, and it shouldn't be decided by the culture, by the race, or by the nation who may have the right to live with dignity and peace, and all the other others have no right to live at all. To continue with our uh, speakers for the day, uh, we have a speaker from uh, Pakistan itself. We have a great voice from there who has been a supportive voice for the Baloch missing persons. She has actually been working on the cases of Baloch missing persons. She has been representing them there. Uh, Iman Mazari, who is a human rights activist and a senior lawyer, uh, one who has been obviously actively working on the cases of Baloch uh, students who have been picked up from their university campus and by the Pakistani forces. So we'll, we have a, a video uh, a speech of her, and I want to uh, ask my friend Niaz to please come and play that speech. Thank you. There is is continuing impunity for the practice of enforced disappearances, primarily because of the lack of political will to end impunity for the practice, coupled together with increasing civil military imbalance. I want to highlight uh, two cases very briefly that give an overview of the nature and scale of the issue and the role of the courts, as well as the apathy of the executive in dealing with these cases. First, the case of Rashid Hussain, a Baloch activist who was forcibly disappeared and held in incommunicado detention from uh, within the UAE. And subsequently, official documents from the UAE disclosed that uh, Rashid Hussain was extradited to Pakistan on 22nd June 2019. Now, the writ petition seeking information from the Foreign Ministry and the Ministry of Interior uh, as to his place of detention and his uh, fate in itself has been pending in the Islamabad High Court since 2022. Uh, this petition was filed after the family had filed several other different petitions before the Balochistan High Court and the Sindh High Court. And I just want to emphasize that there, the hearing for this case was fixed on the 5th of December and then the night before the case, uh, the case in which the Attorney General had been summoned, uh, the case was delisted mysteriously. So despite the fact that Rashid's mother has approached the Commission of Inquiry on Enforced Disappearances and three constitutional courts, she's still waiting I for answers five years serious. later as the Pakistani authorities so deny that Rashid the is in their custody. The second case that I want to highlight is um, a case where dozens of forcibly disappeared below students' cases were brought before the Islamabad High Court. It's one of the model cases in terms of the role that constitutional courts can play in attempting to end impunity for the practice. The case begins in 2022 when an MPhil physics student at Qaeda Azam University in the federal capital uh, is forcibly disappeared from his hometown in Khuzdar from a classroom full of students in broad daylight. Uh, Hafiz Baloch was his name, and he remained in a communicado detention for around 30 days or so. And uh, because of the pressure uh, that resulted from a 30-day sit-in camp organized by the Baloch Students' Council in Islamabad, in the heart of the federal capital outside the National Press Club, Hafiz was eventually brought to the surface as a result of that pressure, but he was falsely implicated in a terrorism case in which he faced trial and was subsequently acquitted. Um, the question 
because here the acquittal is besides the point. The question is how any trial court um, can carry out such a trial in the first place in the face of an insurmountable evidence that the person in question had been subjected to an enforced disappearance and that this is just an attempt to legalize or attempt to legalize that illegal detention. Now, during pendency of these writ petitions before the Islamabad High Court, several other below students from various parts of the country uh, were forcibly disappeared, and these cases were being brought to the attention of the court on almost each date of hearing, and this is recorded in the order sheet. So as a result of that, the Islamabad High Court ordered the constitution of an inquiry commission, um, which submitted its report in court in February 2023, and it's primarily identified state agencies being involved in the practice. Um, the Islamabad High Court has clearly stated on the last date of hearing, which was the 29th of November 2023, that the uh, remaining below students, so there was a list of 69 students who were disappeared in 2022 that was given to this commission, and they've directed that the remainder of the students who are still missing, which by our estimates are around 24 students, um, they must be recovered by the 10th of January 2024, failing which the court will order a registration of an FIR against the Prime Minister, the Interior Minister, and other relevant public functionaries. Now, what's common in most of these cases, if not all cases of enforced disappearances, is the complete apathy of public functionaries. Families are routinely subjected to demeaning and inhumane treatment by the Commission of Inquiry, which has been functioning for over a decade, but has yet to identify and refer for prosecution a single perpetrator involved in the practice. So essentially, the Commission of Inquiry on Enforced Disappearances is in itself in large part fueling the culture of impunity. And it's precisely for this reason that we filed several petitions in the Islamabad High Court seeking disbanding of the commission. Unfortunately, this practice is continuing in Balochistan in particular for every one person that is released there are around three to four abducted in his place. It's an unending cycle of trauma and pain for thousands of families across Pakistan who are more often than not left without any effective remedy. Even to get a first information report registered for abduction, often requires families to get court orders to go in 22A before the Justice of the Peace or to seek assistance from the Commission on Disappearances. This is despite the fact that Pakistan has yet to criminalize enforced disappearance as a separate autonomous offense under its domestic law. People targeted often uh, are those who are critical of state excesses uh, or are dissidents, academics, construction workers, students, businessmen, journalists, and a range of people from diverse backgrounds have suffered the same fate. This matter requires the urgent attention of the international community, which cannot stand by and watch thousands of helpless people running from protest camps to commissions to police stations and courts with no relief in sight. The onus is also on Pakistan's political parties to unite on this issue and ensure that they bring an end to both the practice and impunity for the same. So I'm going to thank you all for giving me time to speak on this today.